JavaScript is quite flexible in the sense that there are many ways to accomplish a particular task. In this tutorial, we are going to highlight this feature by looking at seven different ways to iterate over the values of an array. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And also check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, what is the value of looking at seven different ways to iterate over the values of an array? I think it gives an opportunity to learn different approaches as well as learn more about the language, especially ways to iterate. Now, I will start with the less elegant methods and move up. So we will begin with the while loop and a do while loop. So let's get at it. So here I have a simple array and I simply want to iterate over these values. And what we're going to do with the values is simply display them to the console. Something very simple. I just want to emphasize the seven different ways to do that. So let's start with a while loop. So in order to do that, we're going to have to define a variable. This variable is going to use to identify the index of which value we want to display to the console. Once we have that variable set up, then we can set up our while loop. So basically, while will continue to loop as long as i is less than the length of the array, which is what we've indicated there. And then we want to log to the console and in order to access the value of that array, we have to use square brackets like this. And that will access the value. Now we can't just stop there because we need to increment the variable i in order for this type of application to work in a while loop. Now, I mentioned that I was going to start with the least elegant, and that's why this is not so elegant. The while loop is better for other types of loops, such as a Boolean that could change at some point, and you're simply running the loop while the Boolean is either true or false, or something along those lines. But when we're doing something with a counter, it is not the most elegant solution. But there we have it. Let's take a look at it. And we should get all five values, and we do. So that's the while loop. Now, as I move through these, I'm just going to comment these out as I do each subsequent method. Now we'll do do while. Now, I really don't care for the do while loop. And the reason for that is that it will automatically run through the code before it checks anything. Now, there may be some limited situations where that is helpful, where you'd want to do that. And so there are situations where the do while loop could be very helpful, but I have hardly ever used it. But this is how you set it up. And here's where we put the condition. I is less than the length of the array. Now we also need to declare, I should have left this uncommented up here. But we also need to declare that i variable at the start. So it's beginning with a value. And then we increment it. But notice how this is set up. This part here is going to run before it ever checks the condition. So one thing about the do while loop is it will always run at least once. And I'll show that in just a second. But let's first see that we get the five values. And there we go. Now. Here's what I mean. Let's put the number to six here. So six is going to be greater than the length of the array. But let's see what happens. It runs once and it gets undefined because there is no value at index six, but it still runs and tries to display something using the console log statement. So not the best of solutions. All right, now let's get into some of the for loops. These are the ones we really want to use when we're working with an array and we want to iterate through the values of an array. So first we'll use a regular for loop. 
And the nice thing about the for loop is it allows us to set everything up in the same place we're setting up the condition. So inside of the parentheses here. So we can declare the variable and establish its value. We then can indicate the condition like that. And what, then we can also increment the variable as it moves through the loop. So that's why the for loop is so preferred because we can do all of that inside of the same parentheses. Now, in order to display the value, we still use the square brackets like that. So that part hasn't changed. And let's go ahead and take a look at that one. There we go, all five values. Now, I think the next two for loops are even better for this type of thing. We're first going to look at the for in loop. Let me get some more lines here, so make sure these stay up. So the for in loop is easier to set up. We declare a variable and we indicate in what array. Now, what the for in loop is going to return for this variable is the key or the index number of the array. So as we go through this array, it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in order to display the value or in order to iterate through the values, once again, we do like what we've done before. And we use the square brackets with the variable inside. Now, the for in loop is great for seeing the key or the index. The index for an array, the key for an object. And that's one of the values of the for in loop. But this will allow us to see and iterate through the values. So we'll refresh and there we get the values again. So that's the for in loop. Now my favorite loop for this type of thing, for iterating over the values, is the for of loop. The for of loop is fairly new. Hasn't been around a long time in JavaScript, but basically it does exactly what we want. It is Its purpose is to loop through the values. That's what it does. The way you set it up, similar to the for in loop, but we declare the variable and then we use the word of and indicate the array like that. And now to display the value, we don't have to use the square brackets because the value of each element in the array is going to be placed in the variable that's declared. So all we have to do is put the variable there like that. Save that and let's go ahead and take a look at it. There we go, we got all of the values. So those are our loop solutions. We have a total of, let's see, how many loops do we do? One, two, three, four, those are five loops. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at a method of arrays. Now I have tutorials on these methods. The array object has a number of methods with it that we can use. I have a tutorial on that, which I'll link to if you want to get more information. But the method we're going to use is the for each method of arrays. Now, in order to use the for each method, you have to pass in a function. Basically, what for each is going to do is it will iterate through each element in that array and it will pass each element one by one into the function that you provide. So let's look at how we would do that. So we first designate the array dot, that's how we access the methods of the array for each, like this. Now inside of these parentheses is where we want to pass in the function. Remember this function is going to receive the values as for each iterates through that array. So let's go ahead and set up a function inside of there. Now I would usually use an arrow function inside a method like this. And so I'm going to do that. If you need to learn about arrow functions, I'll link to a tutorial on that as well. So I'm going to put parentheses to start our arrow function. I'm going to indicate the variable that will contain the value. 
as for each iterates through the values, it will put that value into that variable right there. And then here's our arrow to indicate it's an arrow function. And then what do we want to do inside of that function? Well, we're just going to log to the console like that. And that's all we want to do. So to me, this is the most elegant way. It's one line of code. It's simplified. And I can do all kinds of things with that value depending on how I set up my function. Right now, all we're doing, obviously, is just logging it to the console. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And refresh. Obviously, we get the five numbers. So that is the for each method. Now, that's six ways to iterate through the values of an array. What is the seventh? Well, some who are familiar with the methods of arrays may say, well, you could use a map or a filter. I don't want to use those as methods for iterating through an array because those have other purposes. The map method is to map to a new array. The filter method is to create a new array by filtering the existing array. So the purpose of those are different. So I don't want to use those as just a way to iterate through the array, although we could, that is possible. So the last technique I'm going to talk about is an iterator. And I've done a tutorial on this that I'll link to where I go into iterators in, in more detail. But I just want to show you an iterator. Now, what the iterator allows you to do is it's a structured way to pull data at a one at a time fashion. So it's not going to loop through each value. What it will do is it will set up an iterator and then we send the iterator a next method and that displays the next value to us. When we want the next value, we send another next method. It's like that. So it's a one at a time fashion. So here's how we would set up that iterator. We declare a variable. This is going to be our iterator. And then we set that equal to the array. And then inside of square brackets, we want to access a function that will create the iterator. Now, arrays come with a method tied to their object that if we invoke that method, it will create an iterator. Now, the way we access that method is using a symbol. And this is the symbol that we use to access that method. Now, this will give us access to the method. Now, to invoke it, we need to add parentheses like that. And so what this will do is this will create an iterator by invoking that method, which is identified by this symbol. It will create an iterator and put it into this variable. And then we'll need to do something with it, OK? IT will contain the iterator, but we need to do something with it to be able to see the results. And so what we usually do with iterators is we use the dot next method of an iterator to have it display the next value. Every time we want a new value, we do not next. So we could log it to the console like this. Inside of there, we do IT dot next and that method. So let's look at what that would do, what that would give us in return. So here is the first results. We have the value 5. Notice it's an object. We have the value 5. Then we also have another property done, and that's set to false. Basically, what this is telling us is it's not done with the array. There are still additional values. So we could do it.next again to get the next value. it.next. And if we wanted to just get the value, we could do something like that. And that would give us 15. So you can see that we're moving through it at a one at a time fashion. So I did this technique last, not necessarily because it's the most elegant, although it is very elegant if you need this type of approach. But basically, I wouldn't use an iterator unless I needed to get things one at a time. If I need to just loop through all of the values and do something with them, I would probably use for each, depending on what my requirements were. But for a one at a time fashion, an iterator is great. So that was seven different techniques for iterating over the values of an array. If you found that helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. And remember, I have discount links to all my courses in the description section. 
Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.